good evening again today seems to be a day of uh, for me to speak without slides the same thing happened even in the previous talk my slides are a little delayed in coming but uh, i will nevertheless start to speak uh, the topic that has been assigned to me uh, the first part of my talk is uh, about obesity in general the scope of the disease and what we are dealing with as has been said so many times today obesity is the mother of all diseases and that is the reason that we need to take care of the disease the next question that comes is who should take care of this disease we find that because obesity has never been in our curriculum in our college days in our even our postgraduate days we find that we do not deal with obesity in the way that we should because we've never really been taught as healthcare professionals as to how to take care of it and how to deal with patients with obesity and as a result what has happened is obesity is being dealt with by people who are not really qualified to do so who do not understand the scientific basis and the result is that there is a plethora of information from all the wrong sources on the internet on google on social media and you will find that the people who are talking about obesity are not the ones who are qualified to do so and we now understand as healthcare professionals that we need to take care of obesity but the problem is that we are competing with all those forces and it is becoming very difficult to wipe out those kind of forces and bring the scientific realm into the consciousness of the people is becoming that difficult so the first thing that we need to understand yeah so this is the second part of my talk i'll just finish what i'm saying so the important aspect for us to understand is that we need to make people understand that obesity is a disease now that obesity is a disease is recognized by some of the developed countries all over the world and because they recognize it as a disease there is insurance they get uh, help and everything is paid for and people actually follow up with a doctor but in our country and in many other countries obesity is regarded as a cosmetic issue not really being regarded as a disease and people think that they can lose weight and gain weight at will by themselves by just eating less and walking more they think that that is all there is to weight loss just eat less walk more and then we are fine and that is the reason that uh people do not take obesity seriously and it is not being recognized as a disease and it is for the policy makers now or in the country to recognize this as a disease so that it gets its due importance and all the other diseases that follow will not follow if obesity is treated or prevented in the first place so that is the importance of obesity and we are i'm glad we are discussing all this uh, in current times and i'm hoping that there will be a turn uh, uh, for the better in times to come where more and more people will take up obesity because it's not a very easy science the human body is not that easy to understand is especially when it comes to weight gain so now after having understood from nitin about the pathophysiology and the science of obesity let me take you through how you actually assess obesity so if i ask a question to this audience how you assess obesity i'm sure i'll get the answer we do the height we do the weight and you get a body mass index and you have a table which tells you is this person normal weight underweight overweight obese category 1 2 3 that's the answer i'm going to get so why am i dedicating a lecture to assessment of obesity if bmi is all that we need to know well the answer is that it is not so simple because not only do you need to know what grade of obesity a person is at you need to know what obesity has caused in that patient and whether that is relevant enough to warrant treatment so that is what you need to know and that is why there is a new concept called staging of obesity 
and the staging depends upon the mental, the mechanical, and the comorbid conditions, the metabolic. So mental, mechanical, and metabolic, these are the three M's with which you stage obesity. And I'm going to take you through this and show you how it can be done. So, uh, well, this is not really true. This is uh, just been put up there. I have not been commercially supported for this lecture. So, the objectives is BMI approach to assess the classification, which I've talked to you about. And the second is what I talked about, the EOSS. It is the Edmonton Obesity Staging System. So this was brought about to stage obesity. So please remember, BMI tells you the grade of obesity. EOSS will tell you the stage of obesity based on the three M's that I'm going to talk about. And then maybe we, if there is time, we'll take up some practical case studies. So initiating obesity management you have three steps. One is diagnose. By diagnose, I mean grading and staging. Then you discuss the treatment options. And then you actually treat the patient. So this is the diagnosis part. That is the actual diagnosing and staging. We talked about BMI, so I'm not going to go into the details. And this is the chart that I was talking about, which tells you whether, it's over, whether a person is overweight, obese, one, two, or three category. So that is what you do. But if you do that, what you find here is that there are certain unrecognized things which will creep up if you go only by the BMI. If you look at that small sliver of brown which you see, which is called normal weight obesity, and this paper has again been published by Nitin Kapoor sitting right here. We're very privileged to have a person with all his references being uh, put up over there. So now what is normal weight obesity? Normal weight obesity are those people who by way of BMI are normal. They are not obese. But they have a lot of visceral fat, abdominal fat, generally higher percentage of fat, which you all know is not good for a person. So though the BMI is normal, the fat is so high that it will still lead to all the bad complications of obesity. So that's what we call normal weight obesity. And that's why the staging is important. So staging is done for obese people. Here I'm talking about a category which is not obese. But still you probably need to stage such people. Of course, this is not there in the Edmonton obesity staging system because these are by BMI normal. So you don't really stage people who are normal, but you should be aware that there is this percentage of people. So that brings us to the point of healthy obesity. So is there such a thing as healthy obesity? That means a person has a high BMI, but mentally, mechanically, and metabolically normal. No issues, no diabetes, no blood pressure, but is obese. So is this healthy obesity? Is there such a thing as healthy obesity? Big question mark. If you ask me, it is a condition in transition. That means there's high BMI today, no problems, but the problems are waiting to happen probably. So that is the transitional stage that I'm talking about. So you have metabolic disorders of all types where you have normal weight, you have obese, then you have metabolically healthy, and you have metabolically unhealthy, all dependent on all these different stages that I'm talking about. Now this is the obesity mortality paradox, something very, very interesting. A normal BMI person who is metabolically healthy has got reduced fat, increased absolutely ideal fat, muscle, everything fine, no issues at all. Then you have a person who is actually obese by BMI and is still metabolically healthy, a condition which I talked to you about just now. And the third one is normal BMI but metabolically unhealthy. That is that brown sliver which I showed you in that previous slide where BMI is normal but not healthy. And the last category is the one who is obese by BMI, who is also unhealthy. This is the typical patient. So you have all these categories. Now, what does this tell you? This tells you 
that obesity is not just BMI. You need to find out what else the patient has and categorize him like this. So there's a systematic way of categorizing him into one of these four and this is going to decide the treatment. And that is the reason that you categorize them. So that's what I'm going to show you. So these are limitations of BMI, which I'm not going to go into the details of it. I already told you uh, the limitations of BMI are that you don't assess fat, you don't know if there's more fat, you don't know where that fat is located, whether it's visceral, subcutaneous, nothing. So that's the limitation of BMI. It's just a scale, a number, and an index. That's it. But that doesn't tell you anything. So you need to move beyond that. And this is the clinical staging system for obesity that was uh, first introduced in Edmonton by Dr. Arya Sharma. And uh, both Nitin and I have spent time with Dr. Arya Sharma at exactly at the same time as he was developing this uh, particular staging system. So this is what it is in short. If you look at the bottom there, what I told you was medical, mental, and functional. By functional, you can uh, substitute it by make, calling it mechanical. So that, that's how you get the three M's that you have, medical, mental, and mechanical. And as you go from stage zero to stage four, what do you find? You find that in stage zero, medically, mentally, and mechanically, there are no issues. And then the patient starts to get obstructive sleep apnea, or the patient starts to get osteoarthritis of the knees, or starts to get a chronic backache, or starts to get diabetes, or hypertension, or fatty liver disease, NASH, whatever. So those go into these stages. And that is how you stage it from stage 0, 1, 2, or uh, 3, or 4. So the staging happens when, for example, functional status is end stage. That means a person can't move, completely incapacitated because of obesity. Then that goes straight away to stage 4. You need more aggressive treatment, maybe rehab treatment for these. So this is the advantage of actually staging a patient. Going retrospectively, they applied this Edmonton obesity staging system to the enhanced group. You know, that's a very nurse's health study, which is a very big group of patients. And they applied it. They have all the data. They applied the staging system and saw what happened to these people. And they found that if this was applied, if this staging system was applied to those patients, then it, could, it predicted mortality. So it means that if an obese person goes to stage two or three or a higher stage, that much more the mortality is going to increase. So the importance of knowing staging is that it can predict mortality. And that's why you need to be more aggressive. So this is the same thing that tells you that class one, class two, and class three obesity, that means the grades according to the BMI, if you applied the uh, Edmonton staging system, this is what you would get, stage 0, stage 1, and stage 2 across the BMI levels, which is the important part of it. So this is the suggested treatment based on the staging. Supposing now you have a stage 3, for example. If you have a stage 3 of Edmonton staging system, that means that the complications are there and they are significantly severe enough to have a level of prevention that is tertiary and you may need medical or surgical intervention uh, in terms of obesity treatment. So you need to go that much more aggressive is what it means based on the staging. So you stage the patient and that actually tells you the level of prevention that you should be at while treating this particular patient. So uh, these are some case discussions. I think uh, Nitin is going to take, uh, do we have the time actually? Uh, we do. Okay. So, uh, do you want to take this uh, case? or? Okay. So, should I take this one then? Okay. So, let's take this case. Uh, actually, I think these are to stage the patient, these cases. Oops. What happened? Uh, I need to go back to that presentation.
Ja. Yes. So this is just to give you a small little overview of uh, the case discussions. So this is a 24-year-old physically active female with a body mass index of 32. Now look at this. This line is important. She has no risk factors. She has no functional limitations. She has no mental health issues. What would you put her as grade and stage? What, would, what is the grade of obesity, first of all, according to Indian guidelines? She is a BMI of 32. So anything above 30 is grade 3. Is basically grade 3 obesity, right? So she is at grade 3 obesity. But what is the staging of her obesity? She is at stage 0. She has no risk factors. No, so if you remember the mental, the mechanical, and the metabolic, there's nothing. So she's at stage zero. So will you be very aggressive? No, you may not be very aggressive, but you will start to prevent everything. You'll start, you of course tell weight loss, you start to try and prevent diabetes and you know, so on and so forth. So it is, it's not class one, here it is a higher class, the reason being that uh, Indian guidelines are different, but it is a stage zero obesity. So here you have to focus on the fact that the further uh, weight gain should not happen and the health benefits of more aggressive obesity treatment are likely marginal because if you look at the NHANES data, the mortality is not very high if you're at stage zero. So you may not be that aggressive. Let's go to case number two. This is a 32 year old male, BMI of 36. So obviously it is grade three obesity, but there's hypertension, there's sleep apnea and there's depression. So hypertension is metabolic, sleep apnea is mechanical, and depression is mental. But it is not at a very severe stage. So this will fall somewhere between maybe like stage two or stage three at the most. So clearly this stage there are benefits for treatment. So that also was grade three. This also is grade three. There you don't need aggressive treatment here. You need a little more aggressive treatment. That's the importance of doing the staging. So let's do one more. 63 year old male, BMI is 54. So absolutely morbid obesity by way of BMI. Disabling osteoarthritis, the patient is in a wheelchair, which means he is in the end stage of the functional staging. Severe hypoventilation, that means sleep apnea has gone to the upper limit fibromyalgia, generalized anxiety disorder. So where would you put this person? So it is grade three, stage three or stage four for that matter. So stage four obesity. So do you understand the grading and the staging, the difference? If I have accomplished that much today, my work is done. That you understand the difference between grading and staging and how that helps you to formulate uh, treatment. So that is the key here. So to summarize, Assessment of obesity with BMI classification alone is not sufficient to optimize treatment. So the Edmonton Obesity Staging System is a single disease-related and functional staging system that provides additional clinical information to guide and evaluate treatment. And the treatment of obesity should be person-centric, that means based on staging, instead of just an algorithmic approach. So it is customized. So you customize it based on the staging of that particular patient. So thank you all for a patient hearing and I'm thankful that you all are still here this evening. Thank you very much.